We know that all ocean animals live in water, but not everyone realizes that these creatures do the same thing to balance the salt in their bodies as humans and other land animals. Becky Hunt, marine biologist at the University of St. Andrews, explains, The simple reason why marine animals have to do this is because body fluids like blood and the fluid around cells are diluted compared to the sea, so water in the animal tends to move to the sea in an attempt to dilute the salt in the sea to the same concentration as the internal environment. This means that marine animals are constantly battling with the water around them as the body automatically tries to flow water to the sea. To counteract the loss of water from cells, animals ingest salty seawater because the concentration of salts in the sea is about 3.5%, so they don't need to move water to the sea because there's already a balance. Some animals drink a lot of water and expel excess salts, while others drink little or no seawater and get water from the metabolic breakdown of food. But each animal has its own way of finding the right balance. Changes in marine animal physiology. Have you ever wondered about the process of osmoregulation in marine creatures? It's a really interesting topic. These incredible beings have the challenging task of keeping a balance between salt and water in their bodies. To prevent water loss through osmosis, they expel concentrated urine and save most of their salts. However, when they're in fresh water, their bodies absorb more water than they can handle, causing them to constantly drink water and expel diluted urine. This leads to a loss of salt and an increase in the amount of water in their bodies. This continuous intake of water results in a never-ending cycle of thirst and urination, which ultimately leads to their death. Even in water with low salt levels, marine organisms still experience a decrease in the salt concentration inside their bodies. To compensate, they lose salt through their gills and skin, which causes them to lose even more salts and take in more water. Both of these situations put a lot of pressure on their cell walls, causing bloating and eventually leading leading to health problems for these amazing sea creatures. Disruption of marine food chains. Okay, imagine the ocean as a giant interconnected system where everything relies on each other to survive. In this system, there are organisms that eat dead matter, like leftover plant and animal material. These organisms are vital because they help recycle nutrients back into the ecosystem. Now, when there's not enough food for these organisms, it's like a domino effect. First, it affects them directly because they can't find enough food to survive, but it doesn't stop there. These organisms are part of a larger chain where other marine creatures rely on them for food. So, if the organisms that eat dead stuff struggle, it impacts the entire underwater world, especially those ecosystems that rely heavily on algae-produced food. Scientists have discovered something interesting about carbon, a fundamental element in the ocean. They found that carbon moves around within the ocean, from the surface to deep parts, at different speeds depending on where you are. For instance, near the west coast of North North America, it moves very quickly, but on average it moves more slowly. However, a small fraction of this movement, only 5%, relies on a specific chemical called sodium chloride salt. Now, when the animals in the dead stuff food chain can't stay buoyant anymore, it changes things significantly. Instead of the dead matter sinking to the deepest parts of the ocean, it sinks only part way. This shift affects how energy moves through the underwater communities, disrupting the balance. Imagine if the populations of these key organisms like copepods are disrupted due to changes in the water's chemistry. If they disappear, it could lead to a drastic reduction in the number of animals depending on the dead stuff food chain. And if that happens, it could have long-lasting consequences for the entire ocean ecosystem. Loss of biodiversity in marine ecosystems. Basically, zooplankton are tiny creatures that live in water, and they're super important because lots of other animals rely on them for food. Things like fish eggs and baby fish called larvae eat zooplankton to grow big and strong. Strong. But if there are fewer zooplankton around, it can mess up the whole underwater world. See, zooplankton are like the glue that holds everything together in the water. They help connect phytoplankton, which are at the bottom of the food chain. So if there aren't enough zooplankton, it can throw off the balance of who eats who in the ocean. One big problem is that when fresh water gets mixed into the ocean, it messes with the phytoplankton, making them less dense. And since zooplankton rely on these plants for food, their population can drop too. Scientists have found that while rain or less salty water doesn't kill zooplankton, it does make it harder for them to have babies and more likely for them to die. This is because they have to work extra hard to balance the salt levels in their bodies with the water around them. So in simple terms, if there are fewer zooplankton, it's bad news for lots of other animals in the ocean because they won't have enough food to eat. Altered migration patterns of marine animals. Salt levels in the ocean are super important for sea animals' travels. They need to go to specific 
places to breed, eat, and stay safe. If they can't get to these spots, bad things can happen like more predators and less food. This messes up their body balance and makes their trips harder. Think about coho salmon, for instance. They follow the sunlight to know when to go from rivers to the ocean and back again to lay eggs. But if the salt in the water isn't right, they get mixed up. They end up spending less time in the ocean, which means they don't eat as much and more animals eat them. Then there aren't as many salmon left. Not being able to control salt levels also makes their journey confusing. Salmon and steelhead trout use the Earth's magnetic field to find their way, but if salt changes mess with their diets, it throws off their compass. It's sad because these animals rely on nature's signals, but changes in salt levels make it harder for them to survive. They run out of energy, get lost during their trips, and don't find good places to rest and lay eggs. Potential extinction threat to certain marine species. The Mediterranean Sea has a lot of special animals, about 78 of them, that you can only find there. Some of these creatures live in caves and depend on them to survive. Places like the Calabrian and Balkan peninsulas are super rich in different kinds of life. Even simple animals like sponges show how unique the Mediterranean is. If any of these animals disappear, it means we lose something that's been around for a really long time. Some creatures have been living in little spots for millions of years without changing much. Animals in caves have a tough time because if something goes wrong in their homes, they could die out. These caves are full of cool stuff, like animals you can't find anywhere else. Some animals only eat certain things or clean up after others, and if they disappear, it could mess up everything. If if we destroy these caves, it's like destroying a whole world under the sea. There are still so many things we don't know about what's down there, and it's really exciting to think about discovering them. Conclusion In conclusion, the intricate balance of salt and water in marine ecosystems underscores the delicate harmony upon which countless underwater species rely. From the Ozma regulation challenges faced by marine creatures to the disruptions in food chains and altered migration patterns, the effects of shifting salt levels in the ocean reverberate throughout the aquatic world. The loss of biodiversity, exemplified by the vulnerability of zooplankton populations and the potential extinction threat to unique marine species, highlights the urgent need for conservation efforts. As we delve deeper into understanding the complexities of marine environments, it becomes evident that safeguarding these delicate ecosystems is essential not only for the preservation of diverse marine life, but also for the sustenance of our planet's ecological balance. Through concerted research, conservation measures, and global cooperation, we can aspire to protect and cherish the wondrous diversity of life that thrives beneath the waves. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep learning, then don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more amazing content, and as always, stay curious.